You're watching women's college basketball on the ACC Network Extra. Tonight in Raleigh, ninth ranked NC State hosts the Virginia Tech Hokies here inside Reynolds Coliseum. The first game of 2020. Happy New Year, everybody. And my name is Andrew Sanders. Alongside Ernie Myers, we're so happy to have you here with us. And this is a big one, the second game of ACC play. Ernie, you look at Virginia Tech, 10-1 and in the non-conference. Mm -hmm. They lost on the road at FSU. This is another opportunity for them to get a top-10 win. Yeah, they got to come out and play hard. Uh, the ACC scheduler scheduled them a tough one back-to-back, -to -back, but a good win here will set the record. And the Hokies being led by Asia Shepard. She has been fantastic. Yeah, Asia Shepard, she's averaging 17 points a game, shooting 40% from three-point. She has to have a great game to win tonight. Shepard seeing an expanded role going against NC State, a Wolfpack team that is one of nine unbeaten teams in the nation. They're led by Elisa Kinane. She's a walking double-double ACC Player of the Year candidate. She's doing it all for the Wolfpack. With more on NC State, the third member of our crew is Aaron Summers. Thanks, Andrew. For the second straight season, NC State is through conference play with an undefeated season going. They're ranked nine in the country right now. However, head coach Wes Moore said he's not satisfied. He doesn't feel like the NC State Wolfpack are playing to their full potential yet. He asked his players yesterday at practice to make sure that they attack every single game in the ACC with focus. They come in prepared, and they make sure they bring a lot of energy. He said any given night, an ACC team can catch you. And to speak to that, last season here at Reynolds, Virginia Tech took NC State into overtime. Andrew? Absolutely. It was January 20th, a 70-61 to victory for the Wolfpack came here in Raleigh, but the Hokies did push them to overtime, and we're ready to tip it up here, here inside Reynolds. Wolfpack control the basketball in the home gray uniforms, and it's a familiar starting lineup for Wes Moore and his team. This is the freshman, Jakia Brown-Turner, goes down the lane for two. The lane opened up like a ocean for her to go and make that drive to the basket. Here's the starting five for Virginia Tech using the same lineup for the sixth straight game. Lydia Rivers gives Liz Kitley a touch down low and an air ball as she tried to shoot over Kane. Yeah, tough shot for Kitley. Those two very familiar with one another. More on that later. Kayla Jones loses the basketball and Dara Mabry is off to the races. Mabry off the mark and Kanane cleans it up. Virginia Tech wants to run, so does NC State. That'll be a kicked ball by Taja Cole. Yeah, Kia Brown-Turner got back on defense to contest that layup. NC State with a balanced attack. Koenig will trigger it in. Six players scoring in double figures, and that's a five-second call. She just didn't have anywhere to go. She didn't have anywhere to go with a great defense by the Hokies on the inbounds play. Wes Moore puts his senior point guard with the ball in her hands, and she just couldn't find an outlet. A couple of really good point guards in this one. Cole is directing traffic for Virginia Tech. The ACC's leader in assist. She led the SEC in assist last year at Georgia. This is Lydia Rivers, left-handed scoop shot. That was a good box out by Kinane on Kidley. Kinane can hit this, and she does. She's been working on that three-point shot, and she buried it. Don't let the 6-5 frame fool you. She's actually percentage-wise the best three-point shooter on NC State's team. Granted, it's in a smaller sample size as Kitley scores, but she's now 6 of 10 on the year. She's worked on it a lot. She's worked on it a lot. She started out last year stepping back, and this year she's just confident in that three-point shot. So Kitley with a bucket to get the Hokies on the board. The answer, Jones into traffic. Good straight-up defense by Rivers. Should have a held ball here, and we do. It'll go the Hokies' way. Jones that. got caught up on that play, on the drive to the basket. So it'll be a turnover for NC State. We mentioned that January 20th overtime game here in Raleigh last year. This is a series that has been dominated by the Wolfpack. The 21st all-time meeting is Kitley with a nice catch and the score. 
NC State is 19 and one all time against the Hokies. Wow. That is dominant, <laughs> to say the least. But surprisingly, maybe, have only won four straight in the series. Virginia Tech's lone win came in the 2015 ACC tournament. And, and NC they, State, 8-0 in this building. And they got close last year with that yes. overtime game. First foul of the game will go against Lydia Rivers. Right in front of the Hokie bench, they thought it might have been a clean play. Rivers, like Cole, a grad transfer, comes over from Radford. And as I mentioned, this has been the same starting lineup the last six games for fourth-year head coach Kenny Brooks. Kai Crutchfield, her first touch, and she missed everything. Yeah, a tough shot right there for Kai. She's better on the perimeter. Good bounce pass. Mabry feeds Baptiste. Trinity Baptiste just subbed into the game. Had a big game here last year with 13 points, and she wastes no time scoring. Uh, sometimes players, when they're familiar and they have great games against teams, they tend to have good games again against teams because they have that confidence that they played well the last game. So Virginia Tech with its first lead after NC State got out to a 5-0 start. And Wes Moore will bring in Jada Boyd after the turnover. Kayla Jones comes out. Boyd, a top 50 recruit, just a freshman. Very exciting young basketball player. She played well against Boston College. She had eight points, went four for four. Cole got caught in the air, nowhere to go. Eventually found Baptiste. 15 on the shot clock. Baptiste open and hits. Here she goes again, Baptiste. Feeling very comfortable out here in Reynolds Coliseum. Asia Shepard extending that defense out. Crutchfields. Tough shot by Crutchfield. Off the heel, and once again, the Hokies won a race. Three in transition. This is their game, and Shepard knocks it down. There's Shepard. She's shooting 40% from three-point. They got to get on her, or she can have an awesome game tonight. The Hokies have set a new single season record for made three points baskets in every season under Coach Brooks as Crutchfield gets the N1. That stops an 11 0 Virginia Tech run. Great move to the basket by Crutchfield here off the screen by Conane. She took it all the way to the N1 right here. Strong move by Kai Crutchfield. The junior from Raleigh has joined Kinane being a double-figure scorer, about 10 and a half. She leads the team in minutes at over 30 per contest. Yeah, she had 14 points against Boston College, led him in scoring. She's been playing well this year. Couldn't finish the three-point play, and away from the ball, we got an offensive foul. I believe they get Dara Mabry. Correct that, Taja Cole. And Cole just picked up that foul just a moment ago on Crutchfield, so on back-to-back -back possessions, one now two fouls, and to the bench goes the Hokie point guard. Yeah, that's going to have uh, it's going to be tough for them. She's quick. She's been playing well. For her to go and have to sit down, it's going to hurt them. Taylor Guyman into the game. Mabry kicked the basketball. And immediately you could see on her face, she knew probably didn't have to do that. She maybe didn't know there was no one else around her. It was her <laughs> ball. Yeah, she uh, put the foot out there. Maybe a sophomore from the state of New Jersey. A couple older sisters who were standouts at Notre Dame. She was all ACC freshman team last year. Boyd goes to work. Forces up the shot and makes it work over Rivers. That was a she's, tough two. She's so athletic. She's an exciting ball player. Instantly when she gets on the, in the games, it's instant offense. So we'll watch the Hokies offense work now through Mabry. Beautiful crossover and Boyd erases it. Great block by Boyd on the help defense. They get Kanane a touch and active hands from Rivers. Boyd with a reach in foul. That'll be the first foul on NC State. And that will take us to a media timeout. It's been a good one so far. We expected nothing less. Two-point lead for the Hokies.
Welcome back to Reynolds Coliseum. Virginia Tech with an 11-9 lead over NC State. There is a lot of familiarity on the floor here tonight as Virginia Tech's Kayla King and Liz Kidley used to play on the same AAU team in Greensboro with NC State's Alyssa Kunane. Kunane and Kidley are actually best friends. They know each other so well that during practice yesterday, head coach Wes Moore actually pulled Kunane aside and asked her what Kitley's tendencies were under the post because he said that she would know better. The NC State players got a big kick out of that one, Andrew. Absolutely. And, you know, it's a great matchup because they both have a six foot five size. They're both from Summerfield, North Carolina, a northwest suburb of Greensboro. They're almost and like a mirror of each other. Absolutely. And, and Elisa Kinane told us that in practice the other day. She said, yeah, we're really so similar. And Jada Boyd off the mark here. So I want to ask you, hey, growing up in New York, being a McDonald's All-American, I know you played a bunch against a bunch of guys in the ACC that you were familiar with. What is that like? Man, it's, it's awesome to see them when you first see them. And, you know, they, they're in the ACC. But uh, after that, it's game on. I mean, we're, we're best friends, but uh, we're both trying to win. We're both competitors. And, uh, you know, you just want to win, you know. And uh, you just don't want them to get the best of you. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the competitive nature of it. You, you love them, they're your best friend, but, hey, it's off the business. And also tough when you're guarding one another because they, they know all your moves. They know every spot you're trying to get to. And you know every spot they're trying to get <laughs> right. to. It's just a, it's a crazy dynamic, but you, you're playing hard against each other. And you just hope that, you know, you get the best of them on that night. there will be a hand check foul called on the freshman from Hanover, Pennsylvania, Taylor Guyman. She fouls Jakia Brown-Turner. 11-9 start. Both teams shooting the ball pretty well so far, both at 50% from the floor. Uh, but one sticking point for NC State head coach Wes Moore, he told us his team needs to take better care of the basketball. Through the first break, already four turnovers. They get an open three here for Brown Turner missing, and Crutchfield called for the reach. Yeah, coach was uh, emphasizing that in practice uh, yesterday in regards to they got to take care of the ball and four turnovers, and they, they're converting converting off the turnovers. They, they're scoring off the turnovers as, that they've had so far. Talking to Kenny Brooks, he told us that, you know, he loves his team. They're in some ways very young. Mm -hmm. Lost a couple of all ACC caliber players last year in Taylor Emery, Reagan McGarity, bring in a couple of grad transfers. So they've got some experience, but he said everyone is in a new role and they're still trying to figure out day in and day out what that role is and how to fit in best as a team. Yeah, they're still trying to become a team. You know, they're a bunch of individuals trying to become a team right now. Um, it's tough to get to know each other, where they like the ball, you know, who's going to shoot, you know, the last second shot or, you know, who's going to take that tough shot sure. in the crucial. So, yes. You know, they are a new team, and they're trying to put, bring it together to make them a, a cohesive unit. What do you think about that block, Kinane, on Kitley? Yeah, that was, a, that was a big block. That's something they're going to talk about after the game. Only four to shoot. Mabry gives it up to Shepard. And she hits a three. Right in the face of Brown Turner. She's shooting 40% from three-point range, and she's, uh, she's looking good right now. She's two for two. Asia Shepard had scored in double figures. Can, can Koenig answer no, but there's Boyd. First offensive rebound of the game. I love her athleticism. She has nice bounce for a freshman. But Shepard held to just eight points in Tallahassee. And that's part of her new role, is being the number one player on the scouting report. And nice being the defensive by, priority. Nice blow by move. She just couldn't finish on that one. Oh, a big swat from Rivers, and the Virginia Tech bench loves it. Jada Boy's not used to seeing that. Mabry's floater drops in softly. And talking to Coach Brooks, he said with those roles, they want to play at a fast pace, but yeah. because they're not as cohesive as a team yet as they will be later on. He says a lot of the times we're not, we're not able to play at the pace we want. The other team kind of dictates the pace. I think right now they're dictating it. Yeah, their defense is dic dictating the pace right now. Their defense is creating offense. Just off that block right there, they came down and scored. Tough shot. Tough shot. Long two from Grace Hunter falling away. Sometimes when you come right off the bench, you got to get yourself, get your legs together a little bit. 
before you take that first shot. A great move by Mabry, but no finish. And we've got a jump ball called this time the possession error, obviously favoring Elisa Canane and NC State. Shepard comes out. Baptiste comes in along with Kitley. And the Kayla Hokie, King is on the floor for the first time. The Hokies are just playing aggressive defense right now. Their defense is creating offense. And um, they're just playing harder on the defensive end than the pack. And that's something that Wes Moore has warned his team about is, hey, you were picked second in the ACC preseason. You were going to get everyone's best shot. Kanane, as I mentioned earlier, a small sample size, but a 60% three-point shooter. Not anymore. She misses that one. Yeah, that's not where Coach really wants her at. He wants her down low, getting the ball, making moves, uh, making Kidley or whoever's guarding her, a uh, Baptiste uh, work for it, uh, try to get an M1. She yeah. can hit that three, but that's not ideally where he wants her. Yeah, especially with Kitley out of the game right now, you feel like they might try to get her a couple of touches down low as Baptiste misses the long one. Under a minute left, first quarter, and there is a touch for Kanane. Immediately going to work, too strong, and dribbled off the foot of Guyman. It'll be a hokey turnover. Kanane established position down low, and she had a... She had her on the back to the basket. She just could not finish on the turnaround land. But that's where she needs to get the ball, and that's where she does her best. So Kitley comes back in quickly now. She replaces Rivers. A tough spot for Koenig to inbound. Had trouble earlier. It was nearly a turnover as Guyman got her hand in there. There was a change of possession, so the shot clock completely reset, not just down to 20, and a foul here. Jakia Brown-Turner taking it hard to the rim. Yeah, beautiful move by Jakia Brown-Turner. Here she is on a crossover to the basket. She's known as a shooter, but she can take it to the basket as well. A couple of substitutions. Kanane comes out. Erica Cassell sees her first minutes. Shepard back on the floor for the Hoki Hokies, replacing Guyman. Kia brown turn is a 57% free throw shooter, but she has the beautiful jump shot. <laughs> you know, a beautiful stroke from the outside. She should be a better free throw shooter than that. She knocked the first one down. It's maybe a little bit of a surprise. NC State has struggled in that area despite being a good shooting team. Yeah, yeah they, they, as a team, they're only shooting 64% from the, as a team from the free throw line. The hustle from Erica Cassell and Jakia Brown-Turner will get NC State another possession here on the offensive board. Got an eight-second differential here. Shot clock, game clock. And Coach Moore calls out the play. Hard hedge from Baptiste. Hunter just does beat the buzzer. No, they say shot clock violation. And a look to the NC State bench, a little confusion over there, disagreeing with that one. Yeah. I thought was, she got it off. I thought she got it off as well. So it'll be Shepard with the ball in her hands. Shepard is quick with the ball. Oh, she walked. Traveling violation with .2 showing on the clock. And we'll see if NC State really tries anything here. Not enough time. 16 to 10. Good pace to that first quarter. Both teams started off hot, cooling off a little bit towards the end, but you got to love the pace so far. Already. Yeah, beautiful pace up and down. Great defense. Uh, this is going to be a great game. We'll be back with the second quarter after this on the ACC Network Extra. NC State, one of nine remaining unbeaten, trailing by six here as we start the second quarter. There's a look at the other unbeaten teams and make a note. Also in the ACC, eighth-ranked Florida State at 13-0. Immediately trying to get a touch for Kitley. She's deep underneath the basket. Double team comes, but she finds King. An open corner three and a great start to the second quarter. Virginia Tech with its largest lead up nine. Man, that's what King does. He's a freshman, 
and she's shooting 38% from three. Cassell didn't force it. Good ball movement for the Wolfpack. They get an open three for Crutchfield, and nothing falling right now for NC State. O for their last nine from the floor. Ended the first quarter on a five-minute, 17-second scoring drought uh, from field goals. And that was a good look by Crutchfield. She just couldn't, couldn't knock it down. Asia Shepard, not just a three-point bomber. She can go inside as well, and uh, this is exactly what the Hokies want, playing good defense and getting what they want offensively. Yeah, they, they're getting everything they want right now. The Wolfpack's defense is not uh, challenging them enough going to the basket. And, yes, uh, Shepard has a, a nice go to the whole game as well as a three-point threat. Crutchfield fouled on the way up. That'll be on Shepard. And that will be her first. Here she goes. Crutchfield has a good go to the whole game as well. She got fouled on that play going to the basket. Kayla Ely into the game. Kanane as well as Brown Turner and Cassell will head to the bench. And the first minutes for Kayla Ely. Hey, you spent some time with her at NC State's practice the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kayla Ely, uh, she was injured and she's coming back. Uh, she was a leader on the Wolfpack floor a year and a half ago. She got injured. Um, she just got a master's degree. Uh, she's just, uh, just getting back into it. She's not 100%. But her at 60% is a good player. NC State decimated by injuries last year. That opened up some roles for Kai Crutchfield, who just knocks down the free throw for Kayla Jones. And now trying to work some of those players back. A little hop, skip, and a jump from Mabry into that shot off the mark. Yeah, that was a quick release. Another big block from Rivers, and she's the first to the floor. And I think they're going to call Jones for a foul here. Great hustle by the Hokies. Nice block by Rivers. That'll be the first personal on Kayla here's, Jones. Here's Rivers on the block. Kayla Jones didn't go hard to the basket on that. So but the seen, Hokies are playing great defense. That's what they're doing. They're, they're stifling defense. We've seen a couple of blocks from Rivers. They look like they're really frustrating NC yeah. State. Yeah, they, they, they are. They haven't been down like this in a game this year. Even with quality wins over Texas and Maryland, you're absolutely right, a nine-point deficit. Maybe more here. Shepard is feeling it. She's feeling it. She's giving them the LeBron <laughs> hand signals there. NC State has 12. Asia Shepard has 11 by herself. They got to get the ball in the Canaan. The Hokies bench on their feet, up 12 and looking for more. Kitley playing great defense on Kunane. Tough catch for Kitley. Goes to work over that left shoulder. Virginia Tech shocking NC State right now. And Ernie, when NC State has gone cold from the floor in previous games, they've been able to throw it down to Kanane and get a bucket whenever they want. That has not been the case here tonight. Kone against the drought. No, they, they, they haven't. She hasn't been able to establish position against Kidley. Kidley is a proven scorer. The first game of the year, she scored 27 points against St. Francis and shot 13 for 15 from the field. So she can score down there. King going to take it to the basket, and Ely just picks her pocket. That's Here's what Kayla Ely. Ely brings to NC State. With her head up. She brought it out, smart play. Mabry with active hands. NC State, a very patient possession. They get another open three for Conan Drano. That's what they need, Ace Conan. That's what she did against Boston College in the third quarter at the Boston College game. She brought NC State back into the game or extended the lead with her three-point shooting. It's a great crowd here in Reynolds. They hadn't had much to cheer about until that little 6-0 mini run from Ace Koenig.
Ten to shoot as Rivers pulls the trigger. His ace. Heat check, why not? Why the not? audible groan, Ernie, <laughs> from the crowd here. Oh, the crowd would have erupted if she did knock that one down. I mean, you never saw a shot you didn't like. You knew she was shooting that oh, one. Oh, yeah, right? of course. Of course. Ilya yes, Steele. Ilya with the steal. Watch on the bounce pass. Three on one. Smart play. By Kayla Ely. That's what she brings to the game. A heady ball player that's a senior. Koenig with eight points, fans on their feet. Timeout, Virginia Tech. I knew she was going to have a good game. NC State on an 8-0 run heading into that timeout. All coming from Ace Koenig. How about first Virginia Tech building a 14-point lead here on the road against an unbeaten NC State team, and then the response from the Wolfpack. Yeah, they, that's a great response by the Wolfpack. Kelly Ely getting a couple of steals. Ace Conan shooting the three and giving the Wolfpack a lift. That's exactly what they needed to get back into this game. Virginia Tech with the turnover. Those starting to pile up now for the Hokies. That's their seventh with two fouls. Taja Cole back on the court. All the more impressive, they built that lead with her on the bench. The ACC's leader in assist. There's the sixth turnover for the Wolfpack as Kanane slipped. Kanane is struggling in this game so far. She, she hasn't been able to establish real position against Kately down low. In order for the Wolfpack to win this game tonight, she's going to have to get into the game. And what I mean by get into the game, she's going to have to start scoring down low and playing her game. Five to shoot. Mabry trying to create some kind of space. Baptiste is open as the shot clock goes off. That's a great possession for Virginia Tech. Yeah, they wired it down to the last couple of seconds on the shot clock. And she knocked that shot down with confidence. Baptiste, she remembers the game last year. Yeah, led the Hokies 13 points last year. Why not have more confidence shooting in this beautiful arena? Tend to shoot here for Kanane. You see Kitley just pushing her off of her spot. Cole picks the pocket of Ely. Maber using that offhand to create a little space. Seeing Michaela Ennis for the first time, number 15. The Hokies just look quicker than the Wolfpack at this time in the game. Here is Ennis with a corner three. Missed everything. I would like to see them get the ball into Kinane down low on this possession. Ely with the blow by, blew the layup. Good move to the basket. She just couldn't convert. And it's missing a couple of shots. Now Kitley fell down. It's five on four for just a moment here. And they got Baptiste matched up with Kanane. Kanane is allowing jumps. herself to get pushed off the block. Kitley doing a nice job to guard the four position that time. And Cole's floater drops. And after the timeout from Coach Brooks, Virginia Tech with a 5-0 run back the other way. Nice teardrop drive to the basket by Cole. The Hogies are in control of this game right now. They're getting everything they want. Crutchfield, oh, she just tried to, to lay that one in. Maybe from a little further out than she wanted to. Yeah, Keith Lee challenged her at the rim. Crutchfield with a great catch, and she scores it. Good push by Ace to Conan. 
for the lay-in. The, the lay-in is nice, but I think this is an underrated catch right here. Quarter right in stride for the lay-in and the M1. But the save by Kunain on the baseline to get it to Ace for the push. The ball was almost going out of bounds. Rushfield converts the three-point play. And the Wolfpack cut it to eight. Just over two minutes to go here before halftime. And this one has felt, it'll be an offensive foul on Baptiste. This one has felt like an ACC game. Yes. It just has a different feel. You and I did some non-conference games, but you, you know when it's a league game, and this one just has a different atmosphere, a different temperature. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the crowd is here. It's a nice crowd in the Reynolds Coliseum. It's just a mid-season ACC challenge right here. Love it. Virginia Tech had at one point a second quarter lead in Tallahassee as Crutchfield steps back and knocks down the triple, but ended up losing that game by 20 points. They don't want to blow another second quarter lead. They, they've come in here with a focus, and I think they've been really impressive. Yeah, they thought that, that at, at Florida State, uh, they, they, they just didn't play well. They, 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 they thought they could have won that game. Yeah. They just didn't play together. You got to get on the floor and get that. Nearly a steal from Brown Turner, but it's an open three for King and an air ball. The adrenaline for the freshman. And keep in mind, it's just the second ACC game for both of these teams. A lot of players, not a lot of ACC minutes under their belt. Kitley bothered yeah, that shot yeah, from Jones. Yeah, yeah, Kitley bothered that shot. Jones put it right in her face. Baptiste, foot on the line. And it's a quick shot for Virginia Tech. They don't mind that, but it's a quick one and done. And Wes Moore wants to go two for one here. But the Hokie defense is not allowing that. No, Ceiling. They're playing great defense. That might be the first time we've seen Kanane get the kind of position she's accustomed to getting. Yeah, right there. She uh, established position. Great pass by uh, Brown Turner. That's usually an and one for Kanane. That is the first foul on Kitley. That's the fourth team foul, so the next one on Virginia Tech. Will lead to free throws. River's going to come in here. Late change from Coach Brooks. And <laughs> the ball had been given to Kanane just for a moment. Said, hold on. Yeah, she's a 67% free throw shooter. That one looked good. The only point she had during the game is that, that three-point shot early on in the game. She hasn't been able to get the ball in, in position to score uh, down low. Nothing but net on that free throw as well. And Jada Boyd will come in, play defense here, and give Kanane a little breather. Yeah, Kanane kind of looked gassed. She's been getting up and down the floor. They're going to try to hold it for the last shot here of the half. Tanja Cole, ACC leader in assists, better than six per game. She is the creator for the Hokies, and she gets started here. Shepard on a curl with Boyd on her. Great hesitation move, move off the window. That is beautiful. Beautiful go to the whole game. And a steal from Cole, a heave at the buzzer. No good, but what a half from Virginia Tech. They are ecstatic about a five-point lead headed into the locker room. Yeah, the Hokies are playing excellent defense. They're getting everything they want on the break and, the, and even in the set, offense. Virginia Tech led by as many as 14, up 33 to 28, and now standing by with the head coach of the Hokies, Kenny Brooks or Aaron Summers. Thanks, Andrew. Coach, you said that you were a little bit concerned about your team's ability to establish their game with NC State's experience. How have you been able to dictate the tempo? I thought we did a fantastic job. We played at our pace, got the shots that we wanted. We got a little bit of fatigue during stretches, allowed them to get going. Koenig, we, we told the kids that 
you know, if we get on a run and we establish a lead, Koenig is probably going to be the one that's going to try to stop the run, and she did so. But other than that, I thought we did a fantastic job sharing the basketball, getting it to where we needed to get it to, and establishing the tempo. Defensively, you're holding NC State to just over 30% from the field, whereas they usually hit 45%. What are you doing to shut them down? Well, I mean, again, um, I thought we did a really good job paying attention to the scout. Uh, we knew where they wanted to go. It's one thing to know where they want to go. It's another thing to make them try to miss. You know, we made them take some difficult shots. Uh, again, we, we had a couple of mental lapses that we allowed them to get to the basket easy, but it's a game of basketball. They're the ninth-ranked team in the country for a reason, but very happy with our kids' performance. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Andrew. Coach Brooks, he's a happy guy <laughs> heading into the locker room, as he should be. His team played really well in they, his first half. Yes, they did. They, they got everything they wanted. They uh, pushed NC State out, um, turnovers. They got whatever they wanted in the half. And they won the rebounding battle as well. We'll break down more stats, have some highlights for you coming up next here at halftime. Virginia Tech on the road in a tough environment. Built a lead up to 14 before NC State went on a little run to cut it at halftime. But still, got to be excited about a five-point halftime lead. With Ernie Myers, I'm Andrew Sanders. Ernie, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first half. And Virginia Tech offensively doing what they do, knocking down threes. And Trinity Baptiste, she's just comfortable in this building. Yeah, she's very comfortable in this building. She's a... Uh here she goes, a nice pull up right here. In the beginning, here's her on a three point shot. She's just shooting the ball with confidence. And uh, Shepard has just been doing it from three point land. Here she is burying a three. Here she is going to the hole on the hesitation floater off the glass. Here she is again off the three point shot. She's being contested and she's still knocking it down. Meanwhile, for NC State, as Coach Brooks said, they expected if they went on a run, it would be Koenig who would try to end it, and she did with her scoring and her passing. Yeah, Koenig, uh, here she go. Here's Kai Critchfield on a nice pull-up right here. Bang. And, yes, Koenig, uh, Koenig is, was doing her thing uh, off the three-point shot. The Wolfpack guards having some success, but inside struggling. You look there, points in the paint in favor of Virginia Tech. How about this, Ernie? Uh, NC State is fifth in the country in rebounding margin, plus almost 14 per game. Now, Virginia Tech is good in that category, too. They're about plus 10, mm -hmm. uh, but they won the battle of the boards in that first half. I know 20 to 17, um, they've just been more aggressive uh, on, on the offensive glass and the defensive glass. And in order for NC State to get back into this game, uh, Conane has to get more than four shots. So you look for NC State to look to push the ball inside early. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. She has to get the ball inside uh, to score, uh, to get uh, the Wolfpack back into this basketball game. We got to take another break here at halftime in Raleigh, North Carolina. Virginia Tech 33, NC State 28. Tonight, following Florida State Syracuse women's basketball, the All-ACC team will break the day down with highlights, analysis, interviews, and everything else. 10 p.m. Eastern on the ACC Network. No one covers the ACC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. My name is Andrew Sanders, joined by Ernie Myers. We'll take a look. Not the only game in the ACC. Some scores from around the league, and Wake Forest just edging out Duke and everywhere else at halftime. And you see the ranked teams in the league not having any trouble so far. Louisville and Miami with pretty healthy leads at halftime. Uh, but it is upset alert here in Raleigh. Yeah, definitely on uh, upset alert here at the half. I know it's only a five-point uh, you know, game right now, but uh, Virginia Tech is just playing uh, uh, more aggressive right now than, than the Wolfpack. 
So let's break down, Ernie, your keys for the second half because yeah, five points, uh, not a ton, but it's the way that Virginia Tech went about it. Uh, what, are, what are the keys for these two teams? Well, for Virginia Tech, they just need to continue doing what they're doing, getting it, they're getting whatever they want. Uh, you know, uh, Shepard is doing her thing on the perimeter and, and going to the hole. And what the Wolfpack needs to do is they need to play more aggressively and get the ball inside uh, to their all ACC performer. She's only got four touches in the first half. Yeah. She needs to establish herself down low uh, and get a uh, Keatley in foul trouble or, or just get some shots and um, force the, uh, the offense and defense. You saw Kanane getting coached up right there by Coach Bath. It was a standout at Clemson and was a tremendous post player, and we'll see just her impact here in the second half. Wes Moore, his team, finding themselves trailing at halftime, a five-point disadvantage. We'll take a break and be back with second half action from Raleigh. After these words, Virginia Tech was a great first half. Can they keep it up in half number two? What a great atmosphere for college basketball here in Raleigh. Reynolds Coliseum, beautifully remade a, a couple of years ago. The renovations have been tremendous. The addition of the Hall of Fame here as well. Ernie, you played in this building. I have a lot of memories, and I, I'm sure that with, with crowds like tonight, you hear the energy in this crowd kind of bring you back a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, and then you see some of the people that were here when yeah, I see some older people that was there when I was playing. They're, they're still alive. <laughs> but I, I love the crowd, the atmosphere, you know, and the air conditioning. I love the air conditioning. That's a welcome I, difference. Yeah, yeah. Back then it was a barn and it was hot in here and, the, you know, the lights. But um, it's beautiful here. I, I love to see the crowd. It's a great atmosphere for women college basketball. You were – of course, on the 1983 National Championship team at NC State. You were a freshman yes. that year. So w we were talking briefly about getting getting started into ACC play, right? Uh, what do you remember of being a freshman in conference play? Because uh, if memory serves, you were kind of thrust into uh, the spotlight maybe a little earlier than you thought you would be mm -hmm. when Derek Wittenberg went down with an injury. Yeah, um, my first game was against Clemson on the road. You know, every ACC player that played in the ACC remembers their first ACC game. Yes. 27 points in a road win on the road for the freshman, <laughs> Ernie Meyer. Casual. At Clemson. Casual. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, that it's a whole different atmosphere in conference play as opposed to, you know, non-conference play. I mean, if you, everybody knows you. You know, it's, it's the conference, and, and, and you want to compete and you want to do well. So for these freshmen uh, that are obviously new to college ball making that transition, or for Virginia Tech, a couple of grad transfers on the floor. Well, Ernie, they go right to Kinane. She tries to go up and under and doesn't hit the rim. No foul. It looked like she got fouled on that, but uh, that's what they need to do. You know, I know Coach was in there letting them have it. <laughs> have to figure that's going to be a point of emphasis. Here is Cole, who maybe not as big of a transition for her because, yeah, she's new to the ACC, uh, but she was balling in yeah, the yeah, SEC yeah, at yeah. seven assists per game. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's a veteran. <laughs> and by the way, not just a pass-first point guard, she can score a little bit too. Had 17 against her old team, Georgia, earlier this year. Another touch for Kanane, and this time yeah. she absorbs the contact and picks up the bucket. And again... That's the key to the game right there, getting the ball inside. She established position, pushed out, and the end one for Kanane. That is the second foul on Kitley. One more foul, and she might she she would have to sit down. Uh, even more, game. even more reason you think for NC State to go down there. Absolutely. But Kitley has been really good in just her second ACC contest. Keep in mind, briefly talked about the injuries for Virginia Tech earlier. Tough shot. And we got a foul, loose ball foul that I think they're going to get Lydia Rivers for it. And it is on Rivers, and that's her second and the team second early here uh, in the third quarter. Uh, but keep in mind, for the injuries, 
Kendall Brooks had hip surgery in the offseason, uh, so they knew they would be without her. That left them a little shorthanded. And then down low, taking away some more deck, uh, Alex Obofegi also out. They hope to have her back by mid-January. Once again, Kinane inside. She touched it last, I believe. Yes, it'll be Hokies basketball. Uh, but Coach Brooks was saying that that does a couple of things. One, it doesn't allow him to go as big. It doesn't give him quite the flexibility in his lineup. But but two, it means that Kitley has got to play more. And, and she, kind of like you, thrust into maybe a bigger role earlier. Yeah, and, and, and she's showing up. You know, she's, she's playing well. She's playing good defense on Kinane. Uh, she's making it hard for her. Tough pass, and Koenig sniffed that one out. And she knows her game. Look at her. She's pushing her on the way down, on, down the court. Transition three. Oh, that was halfway down, and it pops out. Here's Cole on the push. Yeah, she is so quick. Yeah, she can get whatever she wants. Speaking of quick, the release from Mabry. Mabry with three on the quick release. And Coach Brooks was telling us. He thinks she might be the best shooter out of all her and her sisters. The ball stay on this end. Keatley and Kunain, they are battling down low. <laughs> they, they are playing each other. They know each other's game. When they say they know each other, they are a mirror of each other, they are. Same height, same post moves. Same hometown, different high schools. Different high schools. Different high schools, but same you, AAU team. Though. When you play at that level, you're on. You're either on the same or, or opposing AAU team. You, you Check go out head the to head. Numbers. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-three. You know, we didn't ask. We didn't get to ask them. You know who wore the number in AAU. I assume <laughs> Kanane just just being older by one year. <laughs> uh, but they're, they're, right now what they're looking at is the shot clock. Now, uh, the ball went out of bounds. I said the ball will stay on this end. So right now uh, we're looking at a 20-second shot clock, right. which is what would happen on an offensive rebound. I think that's what they're going to go with, but they are taking a look at it. Uh, but, yeah, so Kidley played high school ball with Kayla King. They played at Northwest Guilford High School. Mm -hmm. Elisa Kinane played at Northern Guilford. Now, those two teams, not in the same classification. Northwest Guilford, a 4A school. school. Northern right. is a 3A school. But both of them winning state titles. Yeah. I mean, they, they're, like I said, they're mirror images of each other. You know, they're both 6'5". They're here win both 30, them are 33. You know, they, they play a similar, similar style. They get up and down the court. And they can score the ball down low. And again, I... We believe all they're looking at here is the shot clock and a, a little surprise that it's, it's taken been taken <laughs> this long. Uh, veteran crew here, uh, very good ACC crew on hand. Uh, D. Kantner, uh, Karen Brieto, and Mark Berger, the officials here tonight for this one. And They're just trying to get it right. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's all you can ask. Yep. Nothing But Net every Sunday is our weekly basketball studio show. We'll preview the week and look back at the best games from last week. You get highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide. This week's show is at 6 Eastern on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. So get a little hold up uh, here in gameplay, but it gives us the opportunity to tell you about Nothing But Net, so make sure you check that out uh, every Sunday. If you're a basketball junkie, you don't want to miss it. I dig by tell you like nothing but nylon. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but nylon. <laughs> it gives us a chance to show you that you know Asia Shepherd, 13 first half points, almost at her, her scoring average already. Here's a look around the league uh, at the the top scores. Tell you what, Haley Gorecki, tremendous player yeah, yeah, at yeah, Duke. Yep. Everybody knows about Mom Premier yep. uh, down at Miami at almost 17 per game. And Asia Shepard, after being a part-time starter uh, the first couple of years, you know, Coach Brooks told us how she coveted that bigger role. You know, she watched Taylor Emery go through it, was a first-team All-ACC player, and I think she's filled in beautifully and, into that and role. And then he also said that she's a film junkie. She gets in there, she watches, you know, all the video, what she did wrong, uh, and trying to improve on what she uh, did wrong in the first game or the previous game. So she's she's all into it. 
right out of the long stoppage. NC State gets an easy layup off the inbound. That was a great timeout, great long timeout. They got what they wanted on that inbound. Kai Crutchfield on the lay-in. So we received word that they weren't just looking at the shot clock. There was actually a mechanical issue with the game clock, which is it's running fine now. So evidently they got that as Kitley gets that to drop. They got that figured out, uh, thankfully, but that's why there was a much longer delay. It was actually a mechanical a issue. Mechanical issue, okay. Kinane, a little face-up game and a kick out for an open corner three. And Kayla Jones seems to make that type of shot. Oh, Big yeah. shots for yeah, NC State. Yeah, she, she does, she does. She hit one uh, out in Hawaii that was a big shot uh, down the stretch. She hasn't has her, had her usual Kayla Jones type steady performance so far in this game, but that was a big shot right there. Her three cuts it to two. Cole picks up her dribble and a steal from Kinane. Chance for the Wolfpack to draw even, perhaps even take the lead. Get in, and, get in, in there to Kinane. Soft with the left hand. Soft move, strong move for the big girl in the middle with the left hand hook. And this crowd has reached a new level as the Pack have drawn level. Down 14, no more. Mabry with an answer. Mabry, the nice move with the left hand to the basket. Quiet to the crowd. Darrell Mabry now with seven points. Baptiste is ready to check in at the scorer's table. Great action from NC State. They get a layup for Kinane. That play executed beautifully. Executed beautifully. Great high-low game. Kunane is in the game. Cole picked up her dribble. She's in trouble. Kunane swats it away. Wolfpack basketball. Kunane is amped right now. You know she was frustrated in the first half. You look at her stat line now, uh, 12 points, 5 rebounds. She just picked up a couple of steals. Oh, they're making a concerted effort to get the ball in to Kunane, I'm sure that Coach Westmore had something to do with that. 18-footer for Crutchfield, no good. Boy, Kitley got knocked over by Jones, but play continues, and the Hokies will push with Shepard. Travel. Baptiste. Little happy feet for Baptiste on that move. 4.59 left, third quarter. That'll take us to a media timeout. This crowd in Raleigh loving it right now. Tie ball game. Back at Belvano Arena, everything tied 40-40 between NC State and Virginia Tech. At the half, NC State head coach Wes Moore said he wasn't disappointed with the way his team had been playing defense in the first half holding Virginia Tech to 33 points. However, it was offensively where he was extremely disappointed, saying the Wolfpack were having a really hard time just hitting any shots. And in order to counteract that, he wanted his team to go inside first. Guys, how do you think that they're doing? Hey, they're doing well. Uh, that's what one of my keys to the second half was, to get her the ball. And it's worked. <laughs> and that is maybe perhaps open up the outside game. Kayla Jones has now hit a couple of threes. And NC State leads for the first time since it was 5-4. to four. The Hokies have been so tough on the road here. And when NC State has looked to make a yeah. little run, they've had an answer not here. Turning it over again, Brown Turner. Offensive rebound to Kinane. And they'll back it out. That was a good steal by Brown Turner. And that's what you were talking about in the first half. Even if Mabry doesn't kick that ball, right. Kinane's way further out than she wants to be. Yeah, with yeah. She, she, yeah, Kidley is pushing her out, out of her comfort spot, where she likes to get the ball. Mabry will get a quick breather. Rivers back in for the Hokies. A little miscommunication here, I think, for the Hokies of who is guarding who. They quickly figure it out. Crutchfield has to pick up her dribble inside out. They go again. It's Jones. Three for three in the second half. 
Kayla Jones is feeling it here in Reynolds Coliseum. She's kind of got a glare going, saying, how dare they leave me open again? Oh, yeah, she's bottom three three-pointers in the second half. It's the largest lead for NC State. Remember, they're up 5-0. Wet spot on the floor as Brown Turner falls, and it's guess who? Jones with the board. Oh, behind Ooh. the back. <laughs> Ace with the showtime move to the basket. Look at the smile on her face. Ace Conan on the shake and bake behind the back on the lane with the land. Don't play with me. <laughs> well, in the first half for NC State, Kayla Jones 0 for 4, no points in 13 minutes. Here in the second half, 3 for 4, 9 points as she's canned 3 triples for NC State. She has been the difference maker in this one in NC State. Down five at half, now up eight. Kitley looking for an outlet. Had it poked away from by Koenig, and it's Crutchfield who comes away with it. Great defense by the Wolfpack. Let's see what happens with the Hokies. I mean, they're down eight points. Do they get back into the game, or do they fold? Well, they get a stop, which is a good start. 2.30 left here, third quarter. They get the ball in Shepard's hands. I think that's the recipe, partner. That is right there. Pretty jump shot on the quick release. She's got 16 points now to lead all scores. She's at her average. That's just a regular day at the office for her. Gane, nice move for two more. She now has 14 points. Kunane wheeling and dealing down low. That's where she needs to get the ball. Couple of dribble handoffs. Cole probing and took a hip check from Jakia Brown-Turner. That's the first foul on NC State in this third quarter. Actually something NC State does tremendously well. Uh, Wes Moore's teams so good defensively. Yes. Uh, 52 points a game they allow. That's 11th in the country. Opponents shoot 31%. That's sixth best in the country. But they managed to do it without fouling. They they foul the fifth fewest in the nation at just over 12 per game. And, and that's how they, they, they don't practice. Get in foul trouble. They practice that. Shepard again. 19. Well, they're not folding. <laughs> She said, Ernie, what are you talking about? <laughs> the junior from Alexandria, Virginia, showing out here on the road. And that was one of the questions coming in is, mm -hmm. sure, she balled out in non-conference play, but uh, first time on the road against a quality opponent in, in FSU, and they held her to just eight. How would she come back? And I think that, that has been maybe the best news for Coach Brooks and for all the Hokies fans out there is, that, hey, she's plenty comfortable saying, give me the ball in a big game. Oh, absolutely. And she's being guarded well. I mean, these are not just wide open shots. These are contested shots. And um, after that game at Florida State, uh, she went to the film room, I guess, and said, hey, I can play this game. Oh, Brown Turner lost it, and it's Cole who scoops it up. Hokies only down four. Oh, Shepard was open in the right wing and didn't get the basketball. Cole can get wherever she wants to go on the court with the off the dribble. Chance for a three-point play. You see what Virginia Tech has done. NC State made that run, and even while NC State was scoring a little bit, Virginia Tech was going basket for basket with them. Now they've started to get stops. They've kept scoring. Here's Cole on the drive to the basket. She's quick off the dribble, and she can get it wherever she wants off on the court. Cuts with her dribble game. The NC State lead to just one.
Yeah, get the ball in to the big girl. Oh, Jones was falling out of bounds and just a, a volleyball set, basically, to Crutchfield. Offensive rebound from Kinane. They'll recycle it. Oh, I'm going to tell you what. I thought that was a flop from Rivers. Yeah. I'm just going to call it like I see it. But you know what? She drew it. She drew it. She drew it. She drew the foul right here. Was she outside the circle? Definitely not. And she's in position. I just didn't think, at least live, yeah. that there was all that she much was contact. Yeah. But that's a veteran play against the freshman, and she got the better of Jakia Brown-Turner there. Good call by the referee. So a couple of turnovers for NC State to close out the quarter with Cole's three-point play. Now a chance to take a lead into the fourth quarter. Going to let Shepard try to create here. Only four to shoot. Hard hedge by Kinane. And I think the band fooled Virginia Tech. Yeah, I think they did as well. Their count was late. They were saying 5-4 when it was already on one. <laughs> the crowd did have them disoriented, disorientated in regards to the time. NC State does not attempt a half short shot. A little surprised by that, but no surprise that this one has been close and that it's been fun. And we've got 10 minutes. Who knows, last year went to overtime. We might have more than hey, 10 minutes, hey. but guaranteed at least 10, partner. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this game is going back and forth. Loving it. Great atmosphere for women's basketball, college basketball. Got a tight one here in Raleigh. Ninth ranked unbeaten NC State putting it on the line here against Virginia Tech. Here's where they were ranked in the preseason poll. The Hokies, they finished 10th in the ACC last year. That's where they were projected to be again, uh, losing a couple of great players. Yes, right. uh, but you know what? Brought in a couple of grad transfers, a couple of impact freshmen, and Coach Brooks is, I think, showing his team uh, right now and showing the rest of the league that they can really play in 10th. That might have been a little low. Yeah, that might have been a little low for them. They, they, they're performing really well here on the road right now in this environment. Oh, back, great door. back door play. Cole gives the Hokies the lead here to start the fourth quarter. Rivers on a nice back door pass to Cole. Koenig's Tough pull shot. up short and a tip out from Kanane. She just couldn't corral it. The Hokies are on an 11-2 run since NC State got its largest lead at 48-40. And they've done it with Liz Kitley on the bench with three fouls. Yeah, it seems like the lane has opened up for a lot of these, uh, for Cole and for Shepard. Here's Cole going to the hole. She can do that all day long. I told you earlier, she can score 17 points against Georgia. She's not putting up those kind of numbers because she got off to a slow start, but here in crunch time, she's got nine now. And with Kitley on the bench, they go right inside. Kane misses the lay-in, and a quick cleanup by Baptiste. This NC State team is not used to losing, especially not here at home. Such a tough place to play, but that undefeated record on the line here tonight, and they're having a tough time stopping the Hokies right now with Cole creating and Shepard knocking down everything. But she knocks that one out of bounds. Yeah, they are playing way above their, not above their heads, I won't say that, but they're playing very confidently in this environment here in Reynolds Coliseum. Open three for Koenig. Here's Cole on a push. Oh, and Koenig read it. She just read the eyes of Cole. She knew what she might try to do as a point guard, and she was ready for that. She was ready for that uh, pass. Got the ball right back. Ran that down and laid it in. Every possession so crucial here. Seven and a half left to go. The decent defensive intensity has picked up for the Wolfpack. Shepard 
Rainbow way short. She had been five of six from deep, but that one was a bit forced. Kitley's ready to check back in at the next whistle. Ganane wide open, NC State takes the lead back. Grace pass by Ace. They read each other's eyes on that nice lob to Alyssa for the lay-in. This is where you wonder if the experience for NC State of players like Ace Koenig, like Kayla Ely is on the floor right now. How much of a factor is that down the stretch? Oh, that's a big factor. Oh. Because they've been here before. They've been in this environment. Here she is again on the steal. There's the senior going straight to the basket. And a foul before she got to the bucket. I tell you what, I thought Kanane got away with a bump right there. I was surprised yeah, that went uncalled. And then the turnover right after. But once again, it's Koenig reading passing lanes. Yeah, Koenig playing great defense. She was fouled on the land. And that's a really smart foul from Mabry. Yes. Here's the lob into Conan to two. That's the first foul, by the way, on either team here in this fourth quarter. Koenig's running the show. Step back. She is feeling it. She's one of the best three-point shooters in the country. And she's showing the country why and how she gets it done. You talk about that experience. That is a four-year point guard. Coming up with a couple of big steals. Kanane and Kitley falling all over one another, and this should be Kanane's first foul. It is. His ace on the wraparound with the three-point pull-up. She's saying, come on, let's go. She has given her team the spark that has turned a three-point deficit now into a four-point advantage. Shepard with a step back. Why not? Shepard. It's keeping them in the game. Six of eight from deep. Shepard has 22 points, and it's a one-point game. Jones has had the hot hand. This time she puts it on the deck and blows by Rivers. With the left hand. Jones delivers in the crucial. Cole with that quick first step. She gets by Koenig. She'll be fouled. And just the second team foul on NC State. And the first, again, NC State with no one really in foul trouble. And for the most part, we haven't had that many whistles in this game. Kitley really the only player with any kind of foul, foul trouble, trouble, and she only has three. Mm -hmm. But Cole off the dribble, her quickness is blinding. Shepard. Oh, she got another one. Are you not entertained, Ernie Myers? <laughs> Shepard is balling tonight. 25 points, 7 of 9 from 3. Can Koenig answer? Yes! You bet! It's a shootout here in Reynolds Coliseum, folks. This game has had it all. Three-point lead back for the Wolfpack. Mabry on the handoff. She'll take the step back. And maybe a chance for everyone, including us, to just catch our <laughs> breath for a moment. Posting Kanane. And, and one. one. The intensity of this game has been incredible. Yes. This is mid-season, ACC. This is not like the get This is mid-season. Here's Kunane. Facing up, wheeling, back to the basket, to the M1. She's loving it. Back here in Raleigh, Ace Koenig she scored 25 points in the win against Texas, then turned around the next day on the road at Hawaii 
and scored 22. Uh, she's had some pr impressive performances throughout her career mm -hmm. and this year no exception. Uh, but what she's done here in the fourth quarter has been so impressive. Her team leading by five with just under five to go. I mean, she's done it on both ends, Ernie. Yes, on the defensive end with the steals. Shepard! She cannot miss. She's shaking her head like, y'all can't guard me tonight. Give her the basketball. Give me the ball. She's got eight threes. Great bounce back game for her. Jones didn't like that with Kitley. She backs it out. They'll try to post Kinane instead with the smaller Baptiste on her. Inside out, Jones passes on the three and gives the Crutchfield who will shoot. Cole with the board. Cole on a push. All the way what? to the rim, tie game. Cole was cold-blooded on that drive to the basket. Virginia Tech with a mini 5-0 spurt. Now what does Westmore draw up? And Kanane, she definitely walks. Yeah, she definitely shuffled her, shuffled her feet. We talked about the NC State turnovers early. They haven't been a problem. That's just the 11th. Uh, but it comes in a crucial spot. It's been Virginia Tech who's turned it over, 19 to be exact. But right now they've got Shepard and Cole look borderline unguardable. Yeah, Kai Crutchfield got can't let her even touch the ball. Cole using her strength, forces one up. There's Kitley, clears out some space, and one. Kitley held her position down low on Kanane and powered that one up. NC State, one of the best teams in the country the on the defensive boards. Just the third offensive rebound for Virginia Tech all night. Kipley got the power bounce. And she's a good free throw shooter. And Virginia Tech just refuses to be put away. Just when NC State makes a little run, here they come, not just to draw even, but they come back and take the lead. And I know Coach Brooks is uh, loving to see his team fight on the road like this in this type of environment. Kanane with an answer. Kanane said, hey, Kidley, you got an end one on the other end. I'm right back at you. Nice pass in there by Jones. And here's Elisa. And they're looking right now. That is the fifth foul on Liz Kitley. Wow. I wanted to double check before I said it just to make sure, and it is five. So she gets the, the huge play on the one okay. end, but now three minutes remaining. And again, they're already short in the post a bit. Kanane ties, ties it. Ties the game. But right now, I have to say, Ernie, I mean, uh -huh. I don't know if you need to get it in the post. I think you just need to put it in number two's hands. Oh, yeah. They can't let her catch the ball. Kai Crutchfield is trying to stop her from even catching the ball. Fans wanted a double dribble. Not going to get it. Gets it away to Rivers. Little out of control. And Kanane has the size to board it up. That's foul number four this quarter on the Hokies. This one goes against Rivers. That's her third. So we think maybe on that end of the court, maybe not having Kitley doesn't affect it as much. But on this end, on this end you expect does. NC State to attack. Oh, yeah, they're going inside. They're going inside. Rivers cannot guard her. Here's the pick and roll right here. Jones is Jones. open. And Kanane fouled by Rivers again. I believe they're going to get. But there's that size. There's We've that seen. size underneath. She on the offensive rebound, Jones miss, misses the wide open jumper. And there's Kanane right there to pick it up. This second half for Elisa Kanane, she had just five points at halftime. She's got 19 right now. 
making it even 20 here in the first game of 2020. And nine boards. By the way, just to confirm, that was the fourth foul on Lydia Rivers. Knocks them both down. Under 70% for the season. She was over that mark last year. It was known as a good free throw shooter. And here in the clutch, she knocks them both in. Mabry. And Mabry is down and I think hurt her ankle. Cole shot well off the mark. And now we're going to get an injury timeout. It happened away from the ball. I didn't see it when she fell, but obviously uh, immediately started grabbing that ankle, I believe. Yeah, when she went in the air to make the pass, she came down wrong. And is obviously in quite a bit of pain. Yeah, Virginia Tech Here team that goes. has suffered a few injuries She goes up in the year. air, and she comes down on Elisa's ah. foot. And that's usually how it happens. Yeah. You turn that ankle, you land on somebody else's uh, – uh, on somebody else's foot, and you turn that ankle. The fans here in Raleigh give her an ovation. She, she gets carried to the Virginia Tech bench. She really has, and you hope it's it's nothing more than just a tweak. If you played basketball for any period of time, you've done <laughs> That's that, gonna happen to and, you. and you know you know how painful it is. That is painful. I've had it happen to me playing and coming down on somebody else's foot. And when you do that, you try to you try to put your weight on it so you fall. <laughs> but uh, sometimes that that injury is unavoidable when you land on someone else's foot. So NC State gets the stop, and now Mabry out of the game. Guyman is back in. Has not played a lot tonight. Biggest possession of the ball game so far. Who else? Kanane, spin cycle for two more. With the left hand spin, they have nothing and nobody down there that can guard her. Debbie right Antonelli now. has nicknamed her the big smile, and she had a big one on her face as she went back down the court after that bucket. Under 130 left, Shepard shakes her way open. Crutchfield on the defensive end. Coach right. Brooks is saying foul. She fouled on the jump shot. Or a little, was there a deflection? Did Crutchfield block it? Yeah, she got, she a, got piece a piece of it. of it. Yeah. That's why they're getting the ball back. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. Coach Brooks frustrated. He thought that it was a foul. Yeah, he thought that it was a foul on the shot. Let's see if we can't get another look at it here. I mean, honestly, the way Shepard's been shooting, you never want to foul a three-point shooter, <laughs> no, right? No. But, you, but at this point, I mean, she's making literally everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to punch her now. <laughs> uh, 8 of 11 <laughs> is Shepard after that one. But, again, was she fouled on that play? Uh, you think about that, 8 of 10, 28 points oh. for Asia Shepard. Uh, what been a bounce so back game. I guess Florida State, she, she went back in the lab and corrected everything that she did wrong in that Florida State game. And Coach Brooks told us, she said, he said, you know, she is just a film rat. Yeah. She, she wants to learn and watch as much film as possible. What are teams trying to do to take me out of the game, and how do I prevent that? Hey. I think she figured something out. Oh, she figured it out big time. And a lot of these shots she's taken are contested shots. Eight to shoot. There she goes. She gets a look at it off the backboard. That's anyone's ball, and Cole makes it hers. Guyman. Jones with the rebound. That was the first shot of the game for Guyman. As we go under a minute, fans here in Reynolds Coliseum get on their feet. Good move. Oh, Guyman with a big block. block. The drive, That's the Kyle's dish. Shot. She's off. And another chance for Virginia Tech here. They get the stop they desperately needed. Shepard in and out. And no one in front of Jakia Brown Turner. Turner. Jones with a beautiful outlet pass to Jakia Brown Turner for the lay in. Great heads-up play by Jones. 
Ernie, I think you have to be, one, so entertained by yes. this game. This yes. is one of the best games we'll see all year. Oh, without question. Number two, I think you have to be so impressed with both of these teams. Here's Shepard on the pull-up. Here's Jones. Hands it out. One-hand pass. With the left hand. Scoop. For and Brown Turner. That's, I think, why NC State is in the top ten and why they were picked uh, second in the ACC in the preseason poll. We talked earlier about Virginia Tech being tenth, but uh, this Wolfpack team, you, you've got a player like Kanane inside. you got a senior point guard yep. in Ace Koenig. A couple of impact freshmen that we've seen as well. Uh, but Kai Crutchfield stepping into a new role. We talked so much about Virginia yes. Tech learning new roles. Well, Kai Crutchfield and Kayla Jones of NC State have done that. And, and Jones has just been Mrs. Clutch for oh, them yeah. oh. in every moment this season. Oh. It's her that gets the big rebound, and they trust her to put the ball on the deck once and make a play and not just look for the guard. Yeah, she's a junior, and again, I call her steady as she goes. Jones has an impact on this game with the three three-point shots on the rebound and the passing up the court. After the timeout, Hokies get it in to Shepard with the heave, and she just forced that one up. But Cole is fouled oh. on the three, and that is such a smart play by the point guard. Yeah, the, the, the get it up to the basket on that. You don't foul a three-point shoot, especially at, at this crucial with 15 seconds left in the game. But watch, she caught her, she caught her with the NBA move right here. Yes. Brown Turner was reaching in to try and get the rebound, and as soon as she grabbed it, she went up with I mean, she how many times it. did Kobe get somebody with that move? <laughs> a lot for the Mamba. Donja Cole spent one year at Louisville, then transferred to Georgia where she graduated on the Lieberman watch list for the second straight season. Missed the free throw. That was a big miss right there. Cole, right at about 70% on the season in the charity strike. Gets two of three. Coach called timeout. Great timeout by Coach. Virginia Tech out of timeouts. NC State still has three more after this if necessary. And so Coach Moore said, you know, why not? Let's talk this one over. Yeah, talk it over. It's a great timeout. Gets to set up his, uh, you know, his offense. But uh, hopefully he, what he thinks will be the last play of the game. 28 points from Asia Shepard. Now 25 for Elisa Kinane. That gives her 20 just in the second half alone. Maybe surprisingly, Kinane actually doesn't have a double-double. That's partially how, how well Kit Lee and the Hokies as a team have rebounded. Only eight rebounds uh, for Kinane, who is, uh, what did you say? She's a walking double-double uh, at the start double. of the show. Uh, but, man, this one has been back and forth. And now it's up for NC State to get the ball in uh, against the Hokies team that has smothered them at times defensively. By the way, as I look over to the Hokies bench, uh, Mabry not on the bench. So getting treatment right yeah, now yeah, for that ankle. She's okay. They got a foul. You got a foul. And a lot of teams, you look to get the ball in the hands of the point guard for NC State. They're comfortable with yeah, Kanane she, shooting she, she, pressure yeah, free throws. She, she's the best free throw shooter on the team <laughs> right now. The center. And that's the fifth foul on Lydia Rivers. Rivers, who is from the state of North Carolina, from Kinston. Out with those five fouls. And Kanane has made her impact as frustrated as she was in the first half. She came out a different player here in half number two. Yes, she did. She, she came in both. strong in the second half. Coach Westmore got her into the game by getting her the ball, and she produced. She this rips Wolfpack down team. rebound number nine. And now I think maybe the first exhale from the – NC State faithful here. They've seen a good game here today. 
and maybe a little too early to completely exhale because it's still a two-possession game. Yeah, it's still a two-possession game. She makes these two. I think it's, it's a wrap. And that's why they're pressure free throws. Yes. Kanane now with 28 points. Makes it a seven-point game. That three off the mark. Jones on the rebound. And NC State escapes with a hard-fought 76-69 victory over a Virginia Tech team that was so impressive here tonight, Ernie. This is one of the best games we're going to see all year. This was fantastic. Oh, this is a great environment. Great game. Great ball playing by both teams. Exciting game here in Reynolds Coliseum tonight. So many important moments on both sides. You see Ace Koenig, uh, who spurred NC State on a couple of runs. Asia Shepard, unbelievable. 28 points for her tonight on 10 of 18 shooting overall. Kayla oh. Jones with the three-pointers and the crucial. And Elisa Kinane celebrates with her teammates, tying her career high, 28 points. And nine rebounds for the big girl in the middle. All American numbers. Just a tremendous game. We, ex we had high expectations. I think we got even more than we expected tonight here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope you all enjoyed watching this one. It was an absolute blast to call. With Ernie Myers, Aaron Summers, the rest of our tremendous crew here in Raleigh, we'll say so long. Thank you for watching. I'm Andrew Sanders. The final score, NC State 76, Virginia Tech 69. The Wolfpack remain unbeaten on the season. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.